Well, Torontonians are choosing their next mayor today. Residents have already had six days to cast their vote in advance polls or through mail-in ballots. But today, of course, is the main event, Election Day. A crowded field of 102 candidates are vying for the job. The winner could have a big impact on the country's largest city. The CBC's Megan Fitzpatrick is outside a polling station for us, and she joins us now. So, Megan, how has this campaign played out? Yeah, we're here, Hillary, at one of about 1,400 polling stations across the city today where Torontonians can choose from a very long list of names. This will be a long ballot with 102 names on it. Now, throughout the campaign, there have been some names that we keep hearing who have sort of been at the front of the pack of these candidates. Leading that pack, uh, the perceived front runner in the race has been Olivia Chow. The other candidates certainly taking aim at her during the debates that happened throughout this campaign and on the campaign trail. She's a familiar name uh, to not just Torontonians, but probably to some Canadians as well. She's a former member of Parliament for the NDP. Her late husband, Jack Layton, was the former federal leader of the NDP. She's also a former city councillor, so she does know Toronto City Hall well. Um, and she's also run for mayor before. This is her second time trying to win this job. She ran back in 2014 and finished third. So she is hoping to pull off the victory this time. But there's a lot of candidates trying to get in the way of that, uh, including Mark Saunders, who's another Another familiar name to Torontonians. He's the former police chief in this city, and he certainly has been trying to frame himself as the candidate to stop Chow. So urging sort of the anti-Chow vote uh, to coalesce around him. Anna Bailao, though, um, is another name. Uh, at the front of the pack as well. Now, she is also a former city councillor and former deputy mayor under former mayor John Tory. It was his resignation in February that kicked off this mayoral, mayoral by-election. And he actually last week endorsed Anna Bailao. He put out a video urging Torontonians to support her as his replacement. But she's not the only one that got a big endorsement last week. Premier Doug Ford making it clear that Mark Saunders is his choice for mayor. Uh, he even put out a robocall for Saunders's campaign late last week. So it's interesting to see in the final days how the campaign was shaping up, Arthi. Now there's a handful of other candidates um, who we've heard quite a bit about in this campaign as well. Some sitting councillors, including Brad Bradford and Josh Matlow. And former um, member of provincial parliament, Mitzi Hunter, is trying to win the election today as well. She had to step down as her uh, from her job as MPP to run in this race. So these are kind of some of the names we heard a lot throughout the campaign, all of them pitching their ideas to voters. Um, and it will be up to Torontonians, of course, to make their pick today. They have until 8 p.m. tonight to cast their ballot. What about some of those key issues, Megan? What's some of that we've some of what we've heard so far on the campaign trail? Oh, definitely housing has been a big theme throughout this campaign and the lack of it in the city of Toronto, a lack of affordable housing, rising uh, rental costs in the city as well as home prices. So we heard a lot from the candidates about their ideas for building new homes in this city and how to make this city more affordable. Safety was another issue we heard quite a bit about during the campaign as well as safety on public transit. That's been a hot button issue in Toronto in the last couple of months. I've been speaking to some voters here at this polling station about what they thought of the campaign, what issues have been important to them as they cast their ballot. Here's some of what I'm hearing. A lot more care and consideration needs to go into what other services are really important to address the root causes of homelessness, poverty, violence in the city, addiction issues, mental health issues. The rents are, are astronomical in the, you know, $1,500, $2,000 for a one-bedroom apartment. People can't afford that. Um, housing is definitely one of the big issues. I think making Toronto a safe place for everyone. Um, you know, a lot of the candidates are talking about clearing out the encampments, which does nothing for the people who are actually living there. No one chooses to live in a tent by choice. So a range of issues important to Toronto voters in this by-election, but another big challenge for whoever does win this race, Hillary, is Toronto's finances. Uh, the city has a major budget uh, shortfall, its most recent budget, like in the neighbourhood of a billion dollars or so, and the city has been uh, really kind of begging the provincial and federal governments to send more money this city's way, and uh, so that will be a big challenge. The candidates have had to explain not just their promises, 
pledges and their pledges um, for this city, but how to pay for them. Uh, will there be property tax increases beyond what Torontonians have already experienced in this past year? Um, you know, that again will be a major challenge for whoever does take over at City Hall. We'll find out the results later tonight. We'll be watching. Megan, thank you for this. The CBC's Megan Fitzpatrick there for us in Toronto.